Hi everyone, Oz here. Uh, today I want to answer some of the questions you guys have um, about the Blueprint program. So many of you, I, I think until now I've been on thousands of phone calls with people who want to join the Blueprint and they ask a couple of questions and um, some of them are repeated over and over again. So I wanted to address those on my channel in case you're going through the videos and maybe you watched the webinar already and you're considering joining, but you do have those questions. So I wanted to take, spend a couple of minutes to um, discuss what those questions are um, and, and give you my answers so that could help you um, expedite the decision-making process to decide whether this is for you or not. Um, so the questions are in no particular order. They're just whatever comes to my mind from those conversations that I've had. Uh, so it's not in the order of importance or anything like that. But one thing I want to mention that there's no stupid questions. So if you do ask me questions directly or if you're on the phone, like this is, you're trying to decide if you want to build this business or not. So there's no stupid business. There's no stupid question, right? So don't feel intimidated, just ask away if you do have any questions, but it, through time accumulation of th those questions, again, as I said, some of them have been repeated many times. So I thought it would be a good idea to um, take care of that um, uh, for you today. So uh, one question that comes to mind is, you know, uh, uh, I, I want to know, uh, can you tell me what it is that you do? Uh, no, I didn't watch the webinar. Or oh, do I have to go through 40, 45 minutes of and the entire webinar to find out what it is uh, that you do or how Blueprint works and things like that. So some people um, complain about the, the length of the webinar, but most of my serious students, I think they watch it more than once, right? If they really put their mind into starting this business, um, they watch it a couple of times, they kind of take notes and they come to the call prepared or they just sign up uh, online to join the blueprint. So they are, they do their homework. They watch it a couple of times and things like that. But those who don't, they're usually not clear on what the blueprint is all about, how it works, how to enroll, and why do they have to go through like 45 minutes of a webinar, whereas I can just take two minutes to explain. Um, the reason, the answer to that question is the reason we do it that way is to set up a filter, uh, meaning that we want to make sure that we only attract people who are serious about this. If someone is not serious about this, or, or they're maybe, they might be serious about this, but they can't sit through a 45 minute webinar, it is very unlikely that they're gonna uh, be okay to go through a longer training. Uh, because webinar is 45 minutes, but the blueprint is six modules, and as of the day of the recording, we have over 40 lessons in it. Uh, so it's a very comprehensive, blueprint. So if someone has a problem staying focused for 40 minutes, it's very unlikely that they're going to be able to go through, apply, and build a business. Uh, so that requires a certain thing, certain kind of effort and commitment. So I want to make it easy for those people to bail out uh, instead of them wasting their time or my time. So uh, that's why we set it up. The goal is not to fill the time with 45 minutes of stuff, for those who watch it, know that I, I give very detailed information about the industry, how it is shaping, shaping why it is an amazing opportunity to start your own business and, and build an income out of it, build revenue. And, and you know, if you choose to uh, build an office and employees, if you choose to build it as a home-based business, so I give details on all of that. And at the end, I tell you more about how to join the blueprint, how it works, and how people like yourself succeed. So that's the reason. The second question is about the industry. So how big is the industry? What, you know, are there too many people in the industry? Is it saturated, not saturated, and things like that? Um, so Merch, although the name of the program is Merchant Cash Advanced Success Blueprint, what we're teaching is alternative lending. So Merchant Cash Advance is a product within the realm of alternative lending. Alternative lending or non-bank lending is a type of lending to small businesses where the traditional bank loans are not an option. And for most of the time, they're not a good option for small businesses. Banks, with the current banking system that we have, 
their ideal client is usually not the mom and pop type of business. They, their ideal client, if you talk to any bank manager, uh, they, they'll tell you they want to provide funding to mid-sized businesses, you know, 12, 20 to 30 to 40 plus employee businesses that does certain revenue and they have a board of directors and things like that. Whereas 75% of the U.S. economy consists of small businesses. Therefore, the demand for lending from the small business area is going to be much larger than the other segments. So uh, for that reason, the, the current demand for alternative lending, although it's very difficult to pinpoint an exact dollar amount, uh, we know that it's 150 to $300 billion industry. So when someone asks me a question about the competition or the saturation, uh, instead of telling you how I feel about it, I want to go back to the numbers. So when you have that size of an industry, of course, you want to see how much of that is currently being funded. Uh, so what, what's being currently funded is 15 to $40 billion, depending on the time. So as you can see, we're not even funding half of the demand. So there's a supply and demand cycle, right? So someone is demanded X amount of times, and if the supply is much bigger than the demand, then you have competition. You have too many people offering or trying to sell to a small group of people are interested in your product. Well, what we have in alternative lending is the opposite. So demand is this big, this big, although there is supply and funding, the people who are offering these services are very small. So you have this much of demand, this many of people offering. So that's why this business opportunity is super attractive because when you talk to, like literally, if you take a, a piece of paper and a pen and walk down um, the closest uh, strip mall to where you live right now, and start talking to businesses about alternative lending, most of them will have no idea about that, about the existence of that option. The traditional understanding of getting funding for your business, you just show up to your local branch and ask them for funding, and if they can, they'll provide you the funding, right, if you do qualify. But 75% of the time, you're not gonna qualify. Um, that's another thing. Um, the third question that goes parallel to this, somewhat close to, is uh, what do you think about the future of this industry? Will this be replaced by something else? Or what if banks start offering alternative lending or merchant cash advance? What if this industry disappears tomorrow? So that's one of the questions. And I like to look at it just like, less like most things, I like to look at it from a logical perspective, right? Because there's a lot of emotions uh, connect to that question. What if, what if I start this business and tomorrow then the business is gone, right? So we talked about the size of the industry. We talked about the demand. So what would need to happen for this industry to disappear or for this demand to be supplied by a different channel? Um, that's a valid question. But when you think about it, we're talking about an industry that we're not fulfilling the demand. For merchant cash advance industry to disappear tomorrow, one of the two things needs to happen. Something needs to replace it right? Since you cannot destroy the demand, we're not going to wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden all the small businesses, they don't need money anymore. Like they're just fine. Their financial situation is perfectly healthy. They're not looking to grow. They're not, they don't need capital. Nothing in their business breaks. So they need funding to fix it. They don't need to buy equipment. Tomorrow, all of that demand stops. That's one way that this business opportunity would just disappear. Um, as you can imagine, that's just not going to happen. Tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, next decade, businesses, small businesses will itch to grow, uh, will have money they have to pay back, will we'll, we'll want to hire employees, will want to spend money for marketing, want to buy out their competition, will want to come up with a new product. So they will need money. Since we can't destroy the demand, then the second way this industry would disappear is if someone else, some bigger entity, starts offering these products then who would be doing this? Well, you can, you can say, well, there are thousands of branches of the banks. Why would they not do it? Well, the problem is that the traditional banking system is not designed um, a structure in a way to handle alternative lending. So they have a physical building, a real estate, they have employees, they have a pool of products. If they get into alternative lending, and these are owned by like banks, usually owned by publicly owned companies, 
So they, will they really get into an industry that there's a lot of, um, there's massive demand and they'll have to bring more people uh, then their underwriting team is not is not like they, they they're used to approving mortgages and large loans and and things like that we're talking about a different product and with this massive demand we're looking for a massive shift and change in the banking industry so as anything anyone who knows a little about banking history knows that banking in the US is very slow to change they're not going to adapt to a new product tomorrow uh, and uh, honestly, they don't even want to. Like, if you know your bank manager, go talk to them about Merchant Cash Advance to see if they would want to be involved with something like that, because that would mean more training. That would mean the banks would have access to uh, other funds, and banks like to like to connect things to um, some kind of asset, some kind of collateral, so they reduce their risk. Why is that? Well, a lot of our publicly owns and their portfolio, they don't want to have, let's say, $2 billion of unsecured lending because the type of lending that, uh, that the Blueprint teaches is unsecured lending. It's not attached to your car. It's not attached to your house. It's not attached to something. It is based on your revenue, so it is considered high risk for a bank, and banks want to reduce their risk because they are responsible to their investors. Uh, so if, they, if, if, let's say, Bank of America decides to open up a department for merchant cash advance tomorrow, that's going to be a really big exposure for a company of that size. So for that reason, number one is out of the question. The demand will not disappear tomorrow. Number two, big banks coming over and taking this over uh, will, will, was out of the question. That's not going to happen anytime soon, at least. Um, the third option is well, a politician or the president might decide that this product cannot be offered anymore. Uh, well, that's a massive problem. Uh, any president um, who makes that decision would be risking re-election uh, because it's a, like since you cannot destroy the demand and you cannot change your banks to supply that demand, you have the segment of the market alternative lending and abandoning that market altogether, someone needs to replace it, right? So if nothing can replace it, then you have this big problem in your hands, these small businesses, then they have no source to get their funding from and they're gonna start go out of business, going out of business and who, guess who they're gonna blame? They're gonna blame the politicians who pass the law for that. So that seems very unlikely too. So when you, again, I wanted to put this in a logical format instead of telling you, no, it's not gonna happen, believe me and trust me. For those who know me, I don't follow that type of, uh, that type of logic flow. I wanna put things in order, in a logical order, so you see what I know, right? Uh, you see the way I see things. So when I li put it line by line, you know that the industry is not going to go anywhere. The demand is going to grow. And with the demand grows, we need more people who are willing to uh, start this business and help small businesses get the funding they need. So that's another common question that goes parallel to the saturation question. Um, the other question I get quite a bit is, is um, well, you're telling me I don't have to do telemarketing. I don't have to do call calling. I don't have to go to networking events. I don't have to print business cards. Um, what if I'm not online savvy? I've never done things online or I don't really know how to set up my online presence and things like that. That's a valid question. Uh, you don't know what you don't know, obviously. And the goal is not to take you, um, the goal is not to take a skill that you might not have. And, and let's say that skill level is one out of 10 in the ranking, right? 10 being you just a genius on that skill one is you have, you have no idea. The goal is not to take that skill that you're at one and make it 10. The goal is to make it easier for you. Uh, and you know, the, the way we did that is our training is not super technical, first of all. Second of all, if it, is, seems, if it seems technical to you, we have a ton of support. We have our own community. At, at this point, we have more than 450 members in our community. Um, and they've, they've kind of did this setup and they're running their businesses. So you get a ton of help with our, from our members. Also, you get help from, uh, from our customer support. So our support team is here to help you to handle the setup process because my philosophy in running a business is eliminate what's stopping you from going A to B. A being your current situation. Current situation could be I'm not making enough money. I, I'm, doing, I'm working at a job that I hate. I'm putting in 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Um, I don't have the location, the time, and all that freedom. 
um, and the, the, your desired situation where you want to be, you want all of that solved, obviously, you want to be making X amount of dollars, you want to have the location for them and things like that, what's staying in between is running this business, following the blueprint. So I want to minimize the middle part as, pos as much as possible, make it as little technically uh, challenging as possible. That's why we provide a ton of support, and I don't see a lot of people struggling with this. So for that reason, it's not a valid concern. And plus, stop telling yourself that you're not technically savvy. Whoever told you that is not a valid statement. Yeah, you might not be good with the technology, but just don't engrave it in your brain that, oh, I'm too old for this, I'm too young for this, I'm too this, I'm too that. Just, just have an open mind. If you really want to build this business, and if it is an element that you need to get it out of the way, you're going to get it out of the way. You're going to get the help you need. Like, don't let that be the excuse that you don't start a business that you love to do, right? So that's my answer to that, that question. Um, what other questions do we have? Oh, um, yeah, do we, uh, and the other question is, how, how do we get additional help? Well, we do have the weekly calls every Thursday. I do run a weekly call myself uh, to answer my members' questions. Again, we have the community Facebook group, uh, and I do Facebook live sessions every once in a while to answer additional questions. As far as our, our, our content, valuable content, pool is growing bigger and bigger because we're adding more things that will help you grow your business in a faster uh, period of time. Um, the other question is, is you have six modules uh, and, and six weeks of content. Do I have to go through this in six weeks? No, it's six modules and you have access to everything up front. So you can go through it on your own pace. The way the training is structured is not so that you go through the whole thing, then come back and start all over again. That's not how it is designed. The way it is designed is you um, go in, you start learning and apply, learn and apply, learn and apply. It, a true way of learning is through immersion. Immersion meaning that you learn and apply. Otherwise, it, we, you don't have the structure like a college that so you go through the entire textbook and take a test at the end of the semester, right? And you, you remember 10% of what you learn, if that. So I don't like that structure. In business, you gotta get results fast, and you gotta, you gotta be able to apply what you're learning so it, your, your, body, your, your mind captures that information and turns it into action. And when, as you repeat it more, you get really good at it. Whereas if you just sit uh, in front of a computer and watch, 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 and do nothing, it's like trying to learn how to swim by reading a book on it. That's just not going to happen. You've got to get yourself in the water at some point, right? The goal for us is to give you the instructions, get you in the water, show you how to move, uh, be with you in the water, and, you know, uh, and make sure that you, you can freely swim, swim by yourself. So that's the structure of the blueprint. So don't give yourself timelines such as six weeks and six months and this and that. And if you watch my YouTube channel, you notice that I have – interviews of people who got deals funded in two, two weeks, three weeks, uh, sometimes it's close to a month, and I think our record is one week that someone came in. So everyone starts at their own pace, and this is not a race. The, the goal is to build a business. The goal is not to go through the blueprint and finish the whole thing as soon as possible. Right? That's not the goal. The goal is to do what you need to do, build this business so you give yourself an option, meaning that if you're making $5,000 in income per month right now, you want to get your business to that level at least, so you're making 5000 from what you've been doing through a job, maybe for the past 10 years, and all of a sudden, within a matter of short time, you just created yourself another option that brings you $5,000, then that gives you the option to either quit this job and only do this and get this up to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 per month, or if you really enjoy your job and you just create, you just kind of double your income, right? So uh, that's that's how I look at it. The other question I get is, when I join the Blueprint, should I just quit my job? Definitely not. I'm sure you have mentors and some coaches who tell you, you got to burn your ship, you got to burn your bridges, you got to commit. My definition of commitment is different, right? I'm not going to ask anyone to quit their job and add additional stress to their lives, right? They want to do something different because there is an accumulated level of stress in their lives anyways. And that stress could be coming from lack of money, lack of finances or financial stress, or, or maybe uh, they need to fix their home a little bit, but it's, they don't have the money for that. They want to send the, send the kids to a better school. They just, they, they can't move to a better location. They want to send the kids off to a private college. 
like a lot of it is financial uh, financial stress that accumulates uh, over time. I don't I don't want to add more stress to it by telling you you got to quit your job. You got to be all in and take all the risks. That's that's silly. With the, in the industry that the way the blueprint is designed, it's designed for busy people, right? You might have a job that you're working 60, 70 hours a week already, but you can build a business on the side with full commitment. Again, you got to commit to building this. You can't see this as a hobby and hope that it pays you. Hobbies really pay well, right? Rarely pay well. That's what I mean. Not really. They rarely pay well. So you can't look at this as something, oh, I'll take a look at it and maybe do it on the side. Uh, see what happens. Like, uh, no, this is a business. You still have to commit, but you don't have to commit to 10, 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. You can still build this on the side until it gives you the option. Then you can look at both options and decide which one would be a better one for you. A lot of times you want to choose to be an entrepreneur, work from home, and be able to afford things that you deserve to afford, right? Um, that's another thing. Um, oh, another question on, uh, on the time to be spent on this. Like I got questions such as, like, how much time do I need to spend per day in order to be successful through the blueprint? Um, honestly, you have two options. If you don't have, if you don't use the blueprint in this industry, you're going to go through what some people, um, a lot of people who see the opportunity with the business, but they want to do it themselves and they get their advice from the wrong place and they, they, they have to dial 300 people a day to generate business. With the way we're teaching it, you have to put in about two, two and a half hours per day, not only to study the blueprint, but also apply it uh, for you to start generating results. And if you tell me, I can't put in two hours, two and a half hours a day, I suggest you don't do it. Because with anything less than that, you're not starting a business, right? That means you're not really committed. If you're not willing to put in that much time to build a business, then your commitment level has a lot in question and I wouldn't even consider starting a business. Um, another question is, hey Oz, I currently don't have a job. I'm saving to sign up to the blueprint and I'm gonna join. I don't suggest that. Like I don't want you to take your money that you'll be using to buy groceries for your kids to start a business. The blueprint gives you a ton of shortcuts Instead of trying to make your first profit by the end of year two, you can start generating revenue and make profit in one month. But that doesn't mean that you should just give away eating to build a business or just spend your life. That's, that just doesn't make business sense, right? So for that reason, if you already made up your mind to join the blueprint, go get a job or do Uber to bring your financial situation to a somewhat of a comfortable level uh, that you're able to pay your bills and buy groceries and you have a roof over your head, uh, then you can join the blueprint. If you're like totally unemployed and you're trying to borrow from other people to start a business, um, like I have certain members who've done that because they were like super committed, they understood it, uh, and they just spend their money, stuck through it, and now they're successful. We're actually soon, we're going to be releasing an interview with a, another member. This is a third member that will we'll do the interview who was actually homeless and they started this business. So it does work, but if you don't have to do it, obviously it's not ideal to start a business at that level, right? So, you know, of course I want you to invest in the blueprint and make the best out of it, but don't make it harder yourself than it should be, right? That's another question um, that I get. So what else? Anyway, as, as I remember questions, I can do the uh, second part, the third part. So I don't want to make the recordings too long. So I'll leave it uh, here, uh, and hopefully this does help you. Then if, you do, if I see more questions that are being asked, I can do version two, three, four of this. All right, guys? Thanks for watching. Take care now.